any reduction, just let me know your your views and uh, what's happened and what's gone down. So I, I think I'll just let you speak pretty much. And then if I have anything to ask, I'll yeah. ask it. Yeah. So first of all, let me just start with this. Um, the aggressive part, right? So that scene specifically was edited so bad. So, so bad. Um, I actually ended up asking the producer, like, why did you guys cut it so much? Because it looks like Tiffany is just saying one small thing, and then I stand up, I snatch the camera, and boom. Like, you know, for no valid reason. Yeah. So, so just to backwards a bit, and you know what, I'm not going to say something unless I have proof of it. Let me just say that. Um, I spoke to the producer the other night, and, well, he doesn't know it, but I did record our call, you know, for good reason. Of course. And I asked, I asked him, like, why did you guys cut out that, that specific part before I smashed the camera? Um, then he said, well, it's not him, you know, uh, and the season was mostly about all Tiffany. Because you must keep in mind, I was... I was supporting cast in the season. Mm -hmm. Definitely was the main cast member. So basically, I had to play according to their parts. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not. I'm taking accountability. I'm taking responsibility for my actions. I'm not pointing a finger towards nobody. I did lose my temper completely with the tallow. Um, but as for the reasoning behind it, that's where the trick of the trade comes in. So, mm -hmm. my exact words to the producer was, why did you guys cut that specific part out where I tell Tiffany to tell the viewers about the money she stole from me to buy a plane ticket? Wait, so, so t Tiffany stole money from you to buy the plane ticket to go to South Africa? Go back to the US. Basically, my card information. So, what happened was with the tunnel is I said that thing about um, she must tell the viewers, you know, about the money that she took from my account. I'll tell you the whole story now. And then she said, no, she bought her own ticket. Then I said, no, Tiffany, here's the proof. So I took my phone up. I hold it in front of the camera. I said, here's the proof um, about the fraud case that I opened up against you, even though uh, my bank notified that because we are married, there's nothing they can do about it. And we are married inside community of property, right? Um, so they couldn't actually, what's the word, um, file. Mm -hmm. A fraud case. Okay, a fraud for my car. Uh, and she said, no, she bought the ticket. And then they gave her the opportunity to, because I don't know if you noticed on the tunnel, she had her phone in her hand on one stage. No, I didn't notice that. Um, I think it was on part one or part two. Whichever way, there, there's a slight... Um, basically where you can see she's holding her phone in her hand and uh she was given the opportunity to show the camera that listen she bought the tickets and she couldn't do that and so be, be, I think before, that be, before you elaborate just just one quick question a, a lot of people are under the influence that tlc buy the tickets for everyone that flies to well, anyone that's in America, basically, whenever they fly to a foreign country, TFC buys the tickets. Is so. So, are you saying that that isn't necessarily a true? I, I mean, I mean, I know that it's just a rumor. So, I'm kind of wanting you to correct that rumor for me because if you're saying that you bought tickets, what? How does that work? I, I got you. Okay, so what basically happens is um, they reimburse you for the tickets if they fall, and it depends which season it is that they are filming. Right? Yeah. If it's like a, a warehouse season, 
you don't really get reimbursement for your tickets, right? But if it's a happy after or something like that, they might probably reimburse you because that's what happened with us in the past. But they don't pay it every time. Okay. This this trip that uh, Tiffany came now the last time, we mm-hmm. had to pay. Well, Tiffany had to pay for the tickets. They did mention to reimburse her for the tickets, but due to certain reasons, they couldn't reimburse her for the tickets. Um, but yeah, that's now obviously another story for another day why they couldn't reimburse her. Okay. And um, so yeah, no, they don't pay it every time. And yeah, they don't do that. No, 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 no. You you come at your own expense, and if the, if there is enough footage for them to film, like at the after, after season or the other way or whatever, where there's quite a few episodes to film, mm-hmm. then it's basically worth their money if I can say that. Okay, go ahead. They would reimburse you, but no. So, um, as for Tiffany, the money and my plane, the plane ticket, basically. Like I mentioned, TLC doesn't pay for didn't pay for this ticket for this trip. Um, Tiffany used her money to go back to the states in I think July to go fetch Daniel. That's another thing you guys didn't know. Daniel was here. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So wait. So so before, before you continue. So. How long was Daniel in, in in South Africa for? You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's about two. about how much long? Sorry, about two months, more okay. or less. I'm okay. talking in the direction. Um, could be a bit longer, but I think it might be a little less. I'm talking under correction, to be honest. Okay. Um, but it's more or less from July to August. I can't remember. I think she flew back in August or September. That, that's what's bothering me. I must actually check when she bloody did the payment thing. It was August. It must have been in August. I'll check my emails now. And uh, But needless to say, I was at work and I got the message for the bank saying that, listen, 23k out of your account. So I started calling Tiffany. Um, I saw it was Emirates Airline. I started calling Tiffany and she didn't answer. I got in my car, I drove home. My work is about an hour drive away. When I got home, my place was empty. And empty, I mean, not like my couches are gone and stuff, but my air fryer, my Xbox, my uh, the toaster, you know, small appliance thingies was just out of my place. And no Carly, no Daniel, no Tiffany to be found. Then Tiffany all of a sudden called me, video call, and I'm just giving a brief description of the events that happened. I will give you a better explanation on the live stream. Okay, that's then cool. Then she showed me who was sitting in the aircraft on the video call. Hmm. And right then, then I lost my temper and I smashed my phone. I fucked up. Like a stupid yes, um, because now I couldn't call them. So I got in the car, drove to the airport and told them, listen, how can you let this woman get on the plane? And then they showed me the paper that Tiffany made me sign a few days before that for her to fly with Carly. You know, she said that I must just sign this paper because in case she must fly back so that we don't... Because remember, we were having quite a few arguments right before she left. Right, so she just said, for safety's sake, I must just sign it so long so that she doesn't struggle with me later on and those type of things. So I told her, okay, I'll sign it, but then you must give me Carly's birth certificate. Because that's the one thing that she's been keeping from me ever since. Okay. Right? She had it with her in South Africa. 
but, but she left with it again. Now, because Tiffany went back to fetch Daniel, right, and she came back, her visa restarted. Whereas for Carly's, they didn't restart. I wanted to register Carly and Daniel for SA residency. So I told Tiffany, okay, bring the birth certificate and bring Daniel's um, birth certificate also so that I can register him for SA residence. And that never happened. She thought, I'm going to screw her somehow by taking the birth certificate to go and register Carly. And then she bluntly refused for me to do it. So what happened was, well, I found that out the day when I actually went to the airport and the whole incident happened. They said, well, sir, you know, Carly is now banned for one year to South Africa because she mm -hmm. overstayed her visa. Wow. So, and that was awesome. Thanks so, to Tiffany. So now you can't see your daughter for uh, up to a year? More than a year, yeah. Because you, you are unable to come to, um, well, to go to America, aren't, aren't you? As we speak, I cannot go to America, but now with me and Tiffany getting a divorce, there is a possibility that I can get a, um, a seven-day visa. That, that's what I found out by the um, consular officer or something, by the embassy. I can get a seven-day visa to go and fight Tiffany in court for visitation rights, for example, for Carly. Um, until I'm divorced, I won't be able to go. But when I'm divorced, I will be able to get a, visa, a tourist visa or whatever, you know, to go to that side. Let me just say with this, that I don't have a criminal record. I right, because, because a lot of people say that the reason why you can't go there is because... Of, so where did this idea of you having a criminal record come from? So because of what I, what I did in the past and, you know, I, I got... Um, I, they put me in custody and take me to the police station in the holding cells there. I never actually was, um, what was the word, um, found guilty. Mm -hmm. But there's a specific word for it. I was never found guilty for any of my charges. Right? So I thought that, okay, no, maybe there might be something on my record because a file was opened and all those type of things. But when I um, requested a police clearance certificate, for the visa, for the CR1 visa me and Tiffany was applying for, that's when I learned and I got to know that, listen, there's nothing on my record, my record is clean. Okay. And I would have had my visa by now if Tiffany didn't lie the first time about it and tell me that everything is submitted, we are waiting for a date for the interview, everything is good. If she didn't lie then, about that, I mean, I would have had the visa already. Is, is there a reason but why she, she didn't submit all the paperwork? Well, she says that we weren't in a good place and uh, um, she wasn't sure if it's a good idea to bring me that side, but that time we were like arranging for her to come to me and come and visit and everything. Everything was good, so I, it started to feel for me, like, I'm just a vacation husband. I mean... You, know, you don't want me actually in America. I mean, given, given what you're saying, the the thing that I find quite um, frustrating about it is that it's not fair that if she did these things that, you know, that she's gone out of her way to lie about you, to lie about it, because the fact is, though, this isn't... Her, her choice shouldn't be based on your relationship her choice should have been based on the fact that her daughter would have had a chance to see her father in America and her daughter, and you know, and obviously you, you also, you're so obviously the kids, they don't have to always go to SA, you know, they have the opportunity to still see you in the USA. And I think that is a big flaw there. If that's the case, then obviously, you know, that's something that. Why did she marry me? Say again, sorry? You weren't planning. Why did she marry me if she wasn't planning to stay with me in one place? I mean, the first arrangement was for her to move to South Africa. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that changed. And then she decided to bring me to America. And when the paperwork was like, so to speak, done and everything in, 
Uh, the embassy was just waiting for the sponsors. Uh, I think the bank statements of the sponsor. They were just waiting for that, and Tiffany had it. She didn't submit it because she was hesitant to take me that side, which I respect fully. But I told her that if you are scared to take me that side, why don't you move to that side? You know. Yeah, Let's okay. live together as a family. That is the main objective. There's a lot of things that happen. You know what? I, I stand up for what I did. I'm not saying I'm an angel. I did treat Tiffany wrong a lot of times. I agree. I admit to it. And But just as many times as I did her wrong, there's a lot of times that the TV didn't show or doesn't know about that she did me wrong. I mean, you must you must understand from my point of view. I missed my daughter's birth because of a choice that Tiffany made. Yes, I was told that I will be in the U.S. within three months from the moment we submit the papers. Right? We got married. We started submitting the papers. I missed that timeline totally because when we got married, we planned for Carly, and then I would have been in time for Carly's birth. And that didn't happen. So that was the first thing that, that was like boiling inside. Mm -hmm. I missed the first birthday. Right? Daniel needs me. I mean, speaking to him over the phone is not the same like actually putting my hand on his shoulder and being there for him as a male father figure. Like yeah, I want to be in. You know? It's not the same. And it's these things that is like boiling up inside of me and eventually I was bound to blow. Absolutely. So when I found out about the visa that was lied, that she lied to me about, um, I completely lost it. Like I went live, I, I said, listen, I just found out that Tiffany lied about the visa and, but you have no idea how many things I found out since we separated now recently, now that I mentioned it. I, mean, no, I, I have a voice note even though I have a voice note of Tiffany confessing that she screwed me around even before I posted anything about me and Lauren last year. Yes. I literally have that voice note. I mean yeah. and you know okay. how it how un pleasant it is to hear your your wife well even though we are about to get a divorce but to hear the person that you married talk about how she screwed you around and she doesn't send that voice note to me keep that in mind she sent it to um someone else who forwarded the hello so, Oh, sorry. Wait, sorry. Go, go sorry, back. The, the, the signal went a little bit. You said uh, she forwarded to someone else and then? Yeah, she actually said it to someone else and they forwarded it to me. Okay. So it's not that she said it to me, you know what I'm saying? Just to hurt my feelings or whatever. She literally mm -hmm. told the story to someone else. What, what are the and chances? the way she spoke about it. Like, so just, just before you continue. She was proud about it. Wait, sorry, before you continue, what, what uh, I mean, would I, would I get a chance to listen to this, to this voice note or is it something you're keeping to yourself? You know what, I would, I would send it to you, I would, but until, I would prefer that until I give you the go ahead to make it public, okay, you know, that's... you can just maybe say that, listen, okay, you've heard the voice note yourself. Okay, that's as fine. As a backup. Yes, um, fine. If we can have that arrangement or agreement, I'll, I'll appreciate it. No, you know, that, that's, that's completely fine with me. Because the thing is, with the divorce thing still ongoing, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. You know, yeah, um, I, I get that. With making certain things. Um, if I just backtrack just a little bit, on the tell all. No, sorry, I was jumping between five stories, sorry. No, it's okay. I know, I know you're on the move. 
Um, if I can just backtrack just a little bit, I know on the tell all, Tiffany said that um, she she said that before the tell all, you had told her to not say certain things on the show. Because obviously, after the whole situation happened with the camera and stuff, she then said that you had tried to tell her not to say anything. It, 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 can you give me more information on that? Was that true? Did you tell her not to say certain um, things or what? what? What happened was, since Stephanie went back, right? Even though she took the money, even though everything that happened, I still wanted to fix my family because I know I did my family wrong, right? I know that I wanted to be... Okay, that's I fine. I apologize for that. No, that's fine. Thank you. Um, okay, so like I was saying, I, I still wanted to fix things, right? So I was like night after night after night pleading to Stephanie, listen let's fix things this and this and this um you know i never cry i've never cried to her like she's never seen me crying but i never speak about my feelings also and in this time period since she went back i started speaking about my emotions how i feel how i truly will fix things and you know i like laid it all out on the table like never before mm -hmm. right she was very stubborn. She was against it. She was like um, uh, hard ass, you know. So the moment I go against it and I say, okay, no, definitely it's fine. Let's leave it that with that. I'm not going to make my name Popeye like this by begging you and you don't want to know nothing. And you ignore my calls. You ignore my messages. You only respond three days later. Those type of things. Let's just cut things. Then she would like say things like, how dare I now give up on us? She was fighting for us how many years? And if I truly love her, I will not let her go so easily and stuff. Which makes me hesitate, like, maybe she wants me to fight for us, right? But by, by saying those type of things. Maybe she wants to reconcile things, but she just needs time or something like that. And so it went on like that, and the tell-all came up. And she called me, actually, the day of the tell-all, and she said, um, how are we going to do this with where we are at the moment? I said, well, we can tell the, tell the world that we are in a, in a difficult place at the moment. I mean, things is not sunshine and roses. I mean, unless you tell me otherwise. So she told me, firstly, she asked me, I must wear my wedding ring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, she told me that let's let's just agree that we are in a difficult place and we are fixing things and you must make it known to the world that you screwed up and you want to fix things. I said, okay, yes, I will do that. If that's what will make you feel better or if that will work to get my family back, I'll do that. You know, and then she said, literally like an hour before we started filming, she still said, love you. Okay, you see on camera, um, yeah, there's certain things that will stay in between us and those type of things, you know. Like she didn't want the world to, she didn't want to throw out the dirty laundry. That's what it comes down to. Okay. Because I know, and then, hey, go, sorry, carry on. And then as we were sitting there and they asked us, where is our marriage at the moment? I said, well, we are in a difficult place, like Tiffany told me. And I asked her, where is the wedding ring? And then she said, no, she left it in a dressing room. She was putting hand cream on and she left it in a dresser, um, dressing room. And I said, okay, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, he let it out, like about me dating two people uh, when she arrived, all those things. But she leaves out what she did. So, so that's when I started. That, sorry? Wait, sorry, sorry. Just before you continue there, obviously, Tiffy obviously did, did say that after three days of being in SA, she then discovered that you had another girlfriend and that other girlfriend had been paying for your bills at XYZ. So, I mean, is there is there truth to what she said there? Or what's the situation? There is some truth to it. Some mm -hmm. truth to it. I'm, not, I'm not denying it. 
Mm-hmm. Me dating two women at a time? Yes, that was true. Um, was Lauren aware of it? Yes, Lauren was. How Lauren was aware of it? Now, just to backtrack to February month, before Tiffany came. Tiffany, like, was... Tiffany did what I did in August when she went back. She was pleading to me. She was begging me, leave Lauren. Fix, let, let's fix our family. Let's everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And there was, there was one stage where Tiffany told me, Ronald, it's you now. Now you choose. It's me or Lauren. And I said, Tiffany, I'm sorry. I choose Lauren. All right? Wait, sorry, was this was this before she was so, so this is when she was in South Africa, Tiffany? No, this was when she was in the US. This okay. was in February. Okay, February cool. February month. Yeah. Um before she came. Yeah. Then she fight with me and she said, Screw you, Ronald, and you know, I'm pathetic and I'm very depressed, blah blah blah. The usual talking um uh, the usual insults that I'm already used to. And then she blocked me everywhere, everywhere. But if I'm telling you everywhere, there was no way of me making contact, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, I had to get a new number, and I made contact with her. I said, listen, please don't keep calling for me. I need to see her. I need to speak to her, please. Then I started begging because now I want to speak to my daughter. You know, I I haven't spoken to her in two, two and a half weeks. And, yeah. Tiffany was okay with that, and I was not. So, I don't know if Tiffany saw it as an opportunity, but I still have the message also, if I must go back on my WhatsApp, I still have the message where Tiffany told me, I will not bring Carly to you if you are still dating that bitch. Right? Mm -hmm. That's where the whole game plan changed. So I realized that in order to get Tiffany to bring Carly to me in South Africa, I needed to say what Tiffany wanted to hear. Tiffany wanted to hear I'm not with Lauren. That's what I told Tiffany. <coughs> Tiffany wanted to hear I don't like Lauren. That's what I told Tiffany. But Lauren was aware that I had to say certain things I didn't go into detail with Lauren. Lauren was aware that I had to say certain things and do certain things like the filming in order to see my daughter. So what what made Tiffany stay in South Africa for so long then? Because I mean obviously if she found out so 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 soon, how come she stayed there for that for that much longer? That only she can answer because she like says that she found out about the girlfriend after three days and then she just sat back and like watched me fuck everything up, which is a lie. She was the one, when she found out about Lauren, she was the one pleading to Lauren to walk away because she wants to fix her marriage. She's the one who, who told Lauren that, listen, this is my husband. You are in my space. Get away. But she doesn't tell that to the world. She makes it seen to the world like she just she was sitting on a royalty chair and I was fucking up every day of, of my life. Meantime she was accusing me every day of my life when she was in the SA about talking to Lauren, um, still having contact with her or speaking to other women or this or that every single day. I need to find out now recently that she was talking to Lauren the whole time when she was in South Africa. Up until the day when she actually left to the airport, she was talking to Lauren. Well, I mean, the, the thing that I find the most bizarre is that, so she knew about Lauren, of course, uh, earlier on, stayed for longer, and then still brought out Daniel to SA, despite the fact that your relationship obviously wasn't in a good place at that time at all because obviously you know there was the, 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 the time period that she was here she clearly enjoyed it she clearly um saw the difference in in me you know what i'm doing and how i'm doing things and 
the way I'm doing things. That's why she went to go and face Daniel. I mean, that goes without saying. You know, she saw, she received happiness, if I can say that. It's, it's, me, it's, when, sorry. She found, when she found out about law, I got law and completely. I shifted my focus. Okay, but let me say with that, my whole thing changed to tricking Tiffany to come to SA with my daughter by doing and saying everything that Tiffany wants to hear, like I mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. My whole thing changed from that to actually, okay, I'm going to work on my marriage. Does that make sense? So at, at that time, is that when you then, um, uh, well, I'm assuming that's when you would have parted ways with Lauren then? Yes, yes. So yes. Um, once yeah. Tiffany has ever arrived, you know, that's all I actually basically needed to help me make my decision of, I needed to feel what it was like to have a family again, to be mm -hmm. together as a family. Right? And once, once I felt that, that's when I was making my decision. Um, only to get screwed later in time. You know, there's so many things that happened in between the time that she was here. Yes, we had our arguments, we had our fights. Fair enough, it wasn't moonshine and roses. But she surely saw a difference in me as when it came to being a father, being more there for her, being more supportive, especially financially, when she was here. It's just, it's just saying every time. Wait, so sorry, just before sorry. you just before you continue, um, it's just interesting because in the uh, in the season, you know, obviously there was the uh, b b before you, um, so obviously when when so obviously in the single life, the whole idea was for her to go out in the in the dating world, and you know. Each time she spoke about the fact that she's now seen people, whatnot, she kept obviously referencing to the fact that she was nervous to tell you because she didn't know what your reaction was going to be. And then we had the scene where she's talking to you over the video call, and obviously she. This is when she then announces to you that she's now seeing people. Now, obviously, in that scene, it's up in particular. It's obviously portrayed with you being jealous. So, if obviously at that time you was Lauren. Can you kind of correct where that comes from? Like, was you actually generally jealous or annoyed that the fact that she had been dating at the time? Or do you know what I mean? Because based on the fact that you was with someone anyway, kind of run me through what your emotions were then. Wait, so, so say that again. Sorry, the signal went. It's the scene where I ask her, where are you going? You look nice and what that. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. But was obviously, even prior to that scene, obviously there was the whole build up of her saying, you know, that I'm nervous, blah blah blah. But yeah, and then obviously on that scene, she then tells you, and then obviously you have your own reaction, and then I think from that moment, they then kind of flips into the cut scene of where you were talking about now her coming back to SA, so you can you know rekindle things and all that kind of stuff. So kind of run through me that scene there itself in particular. What what was going on? Well, that was basically. How can I say it? Like, I was, I was guided into that scene to to ask her, "Where are you done?" For example. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's not me. Uh, um, that was basically me being led into Ronald. Ask Stephanie where she's going, and then I asked, and then. Don't you want to compliment her on her looks? You know, I complimented her on her looks. You know, uh, those type of things. So, yes, I was with Lauren, but that all was part of, Lauren was aware I was filming, and that was all just part of me having to do what I needed to do in order to get Tiffany to bring my daughter. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, so 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 to kind of clarify, so you wasn't actually jealous of her dating at that time, then? No, 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 I wasn't. No, okay. no, not at all. It, it's, 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 it's just important for me to ask this because obviously the build up throughout the season of your relationship with Tiffany, and then all the way to the tell all, obviously the portrayal of your character was portrayed as someone that was still willing to want to have Tiffany, Tiffany back and also someone that wasn't happy with her going back in the dating scene. And then obviously everything then goes down on the tale. Also, of course, there's that, there's a storyline that's been told that's obviously built your character to look exactly how it is. You see what I'm saying? So 
that's why it's important I ask these questions just, just so I know exactly what they were portraying. And then, but it's okay though, because you've already asked it anyway, why those scenes way, went the way they are, you know what I mean? But anyway, continue. I just wanted to put, put that out there. Yeah. No, 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 it's fine. Yeah, you, so you see, the thing is, with um, a lot of, do I care about Tiffany? Yes, I will always care about Tiffany. Do I want to see Tiffany happen? Of course. But let me tell you one thing. If I knew what I knew now, right before the tell-all, if I knew what I knew now, before we filmed the tell-all, sorry, let me just say that rather, the tell-all would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. So but then I would have fought fire with fire. Okay. I mean, I was accused of infidel infidelity, you know, um, when I posted me and Lauren for the first time last year in November. Mm -hmm. But now I know that literally a month or so before that, Tiffany literally went to go sleep with another guy in New Jersey. Um, things like that, you know, that I didn't know when I was filming the tell -off. Okay. And that's so when the camera smashing them in because she had to prove that she bought the ticket and she couldn't. And I proved that I filed the, the fraud thing. Keep in mind that I was using a phone that day, that specific day. I was using a phone with a cracked screen. So I presume that's why they didn't actually show it. But John, needless to say, it was hard for me to log into my physical bank. I could only get into my emails to show the fraud thing that I logged and the amount and everything, you know? Uh, because the screen couldn't click everywhere. I couldn't, just couldn't get into my banking app in that moment and it was a train rush pumping and it was me being upset and shaking and all those things. But how it came that I smashed the camera was because she couldn't prove it and I proved the fraud thing, and still she went and she said, I'm lying. And that's when I stood up and I smashed the camera. You're with me. Because she's making this thing look like she's innocent, but she can't prove nothing. That's why I smashed the camera. Because it just made me so upset with how can she literally, when the proof is there, say that I'm still lying after you played me to come into this tell all to make everyone think that we are going to fix things and I did you wrong and I'm going to fix it and what 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 not mentioning what you did wrong just mentioning what I did wrong and saying to the world that I will fix it and then you come you say we are not fixing it fuck you on TV and boom she doesn't say about the birth certificate that I'm not allowed to have. I mean, me not having the birth certificate is now the reason why I lost 11,000 rand with the divorce agreement that I sent. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that turns out pretty soon. But, I mean, it's little things that is beyond my mind that is so frustrating and makes me so upset like her surname Tiffany never changed the surname she never recognized the, the marriage in the US if that makes sense mm -hmm. what I'm saying yeah because she never changed the surname it's free of charge why you know what I'm saying yeah I get so, that that is triggering and it raises a question mark on why didn't you do this? Carly's passport. You know my daughter's name is Curly on her passport? Since the first time it got issued when she was three months old. Okay, that's, that's, that's odd. Until the day when she's three years old, Stephanie didn't bother to go and fix it. That's why I, I um, can't also register Carly as a, as a resident with a, with a photo of her passport because the name's not Curly, the name's Carly. She definitely very refuses very to even give me a photo. Very, very because she thinks I'm 
I'm going to go and screw her somehow when I have the birth certificate. I told her, definitely, you know what? I'm in a third world country. You are in a first world country. I won't be able to do sh that shit. I can only register her as an SA resident, and that will make the visa fall away. That will make traveling so much easier. You guys don't need to worry about three months and then extending it to six months and then having to go back. All those type of things. And I will be able to open that bank account for Carly and for Daniel that I said I was going to do. As I basically stated now in the divorce agreement. Sorry, I didn't yeah. even mention that. Because I thought definitely I'm not giving her money. I'm not giving her money at all with good reason. How far are you into the uh, divorce? So I, I served Tiffany with the divorce papers. Um, I did serve her with the first copy. When I served her with the first copy, she asked me to please be patient because the previous one that I served her with, well, the previous certificate I gave her was falsified. Um, so now she wants to do it on her own, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, when will this happen? Now she's getting money soon. And by the end of November, beginning December, she will then go see a divorce lawyer and she will get it done. So I said, Tiffany, but just make sure that the settlement, the agreement is the same like mine. I mean, I cut myself short in that agreement. I can send it to you actually, just also keep it confidential. Okay. Um, I cut myself short. I said that I'll, I'll settle for one visitation a year where we pay half off for the plane tickets. Meaning I pay to come here, she pays for the return. And I said that I will pay $200 for each child, but I'm not paying it to Tiffany. Why am I not paying it to Tiffany? Because the month of November, last month, I sent money to Tiffany and she used it as an excuse of it is for clothes for Carly and for medicine, only to find out that it wasn't true. It wasn't what she used the money on. Because Stephanie always told me she wants receipts um, when she gives me money. And when I asked her for the receipts for what I send money for, it was a big issue. Because how dare I question that now? Sorry, man. Just hold on for me one second. That's fine. How's it going? I'm good. Uh, that Marius, there's so much, there's so much to tell. You have no idea. That's why I'm jumping from one thing to another. I'm actually getting lost in my story. What did I say now, last? Um, I mean, oh, the money. Yeah, go ahead. In November, just November, I sent over six hundred. US dollars altogether, Tiffany. And that is now for kids for clothes. It was another time it was helping her with groceries. Another time it was um, medicine for Carly. Small mitigated things. And I have the paper receipts, I have the money gram receipts as proof because people say that I don't support my children. But I have those receipts. Um, to, to be fair, how comes um, Tiffany has never necessarily, or even yourself, has never really made that vocal that you do support? Because obviously, you know, I think if we're talking about the most recent season itself in particular, you know, I think it would have been nice in general. Because I think this is something that's a flaw in, 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 in many of the uh, like 90 day couples, you know, they've never really been disclosed about, you know, the, that, that side yeah. of things, you know. The producer said that this season was all about Tiffany. No, no, I, I, I completely get that. But what I'm trying to say is basically, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is quite common in 90 day, uh, in the 90 day show is that they never really, ex how can I put it? So the, they will never explain or show us, or there's never a point where the person that's from foreign country is actually paying money. It's always, it's always displayed as if like the person from America is the only one that's ever paying money to support the child or whatever. So, no, no, I'll do that because keep in mind, America cannot let another country or another country's citizen look better than their own. Does yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to 
Um, you have no idea. Well, uh, you have no idea. You know South Africa. South Africa is a beautiful place. Beautiful I place. I know, I know. But why they only show the rural areas on TV? That's a stupid example. <laughs> you know, they only show the rural areas on TV in between, you know, when they show different couples, when it's the start of me and Tiffany C, they show a rural area of South Africa, for example, and then they show our photo. You with me? Yeah, yeah. Um, they do that because they cannot show how beautiful is another place to the US. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just how it is. A US citizen will never look bad on TV. If the US send five fifty dollars and the foreigner has sent back five hundred dollars, it will only be known to the public about the fifty dollars that was sent. Are you with me? Yeah. It's it's good to I know that you send money to your kids. Yeah, I just prefer to not send money to Tiffany because when I just started dating Tiffany, right? One of the things Tiffany did is when we wanted to go out, for example, now this is way in the beginning when I just met Tiffany. She would call Roger, Daniel's dad, and say she needs money for, for Daniel for something. And then Roger obviously didn't get a lot of money, so um, he couldn't send a lot. So he would like send 150 or $200, you know, but he, he literally sent it like once a boom -win. But he tried. That I'll give Roger. I'm, I'm not talking him bad. I give credit to Roger. He actually tried. Um, but Tiffany would then ask him for money for Daniel for something, only to use the money for us going out. And I said that uh, I'm not going to allow that to happen with money I'm sending. Mm -hmm. So I would rather put the money into a trust fund Right, because most of Tiffany's needs is being covered by the government. When Kali was born, she got a milk for free, she got a diapers for free, she got most of her necessity stuff for Kali, she got for free from the government because she's a single mother with two kids. Single mother, two kids. Not a married woman with two children whose husband is a foreigner. No, single mother with two kids. That's why she never. Um, recognized the marriage, by the way. Okay. Because then she loses the government privileges. So, I don't know, till today, I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty confident that she still gets some kind of government privilege. If it's not in a financial way, then it will probably be in a voucher way. Because I know they like to give vouchers also. Mm -hmm. for, for your school mark or whatever. And um, what the hell? Are you still with me? Yeah, I'm still with you. I'm, I'm here. I'm just listening. Oh, goodness. It took you off speaker. Let me just put you back. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just, I'm just listening. Awesome. So, um, yeah, you know, that's why I said I will never give money to Tiffany in cash because I'm not going to entertain her. What do you call it? Her going out and having a good time and what, what. I'll put it in a trust fund and then the kids can access it when they are 18 years old. Nobody else can withdraw the money besides them. And they can use it then towards college or to towards, you know, getting a car or whatever. Does, 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 does Tiffany know about the trust fund? It is written in the agreement. Okay. Divorce agreement. It's written in there. Okay. That that is how it will be done. Tiffany didn't like that. Tiffany wants cash. Why Tiffany wants cash? I don't know. Fair enough. She needs cash to raise the kids. But I told her, okay, I'm not going to give you cash then. Can we then put in the agreement, Tiffany, that, I mean, whatever you need, I can buy on Amazon. If you need food, I can send you Walmart vouchers from Amazon that I buy on Amazon. 
if you need clothes for the kids, you can send me the links. I can buy them. If you need whatever, I can buy a voucher for that specific shop and I can send it to you. And she doesn't like that. So I told Tiffany, you are money hungry, you. You like money. You don't like a solution. You are not happy with the solution. You want money. I want to see what that money is going to be used for. That's my main thing. Yeah. Because every time she, she helped me with money in the past, you know, when I didn't do so good in financials, um, she did help me. I, I admit to that. And uh, till today, I appreciate it. And you know what's one thing Tiffany has still today not mentioned to the public that I also have proof of? The first season that we did, 90 Day Fiancé, the other way. Mm -hmm. The first season. She doesn't tell the public that I signed over $6,000 to her. That she won't say. Ask me what happened with that $6,000. Till today, I don't know. Wow. But, you know, she's quick to mention that she sent me this or that or that. Um, but, I mean, she doesn't mention about the $6,000 that I signed over to her. So the $6,000 came in with TLC paying me out for appearing fee for the show. So I signed over four episodes to Tiffany. It's crazy. And she doesn't mention that. I still have the paper that I send in. You see how she's playing victim, but she doesn't state certain things. Because if she says those certain things, it makes, it turns the table a bit. I mean, everyone has good in them, right? I'm not saying I'm an angel, but everyone has good in them. I'm not as bad as I look on TV. I, believe me, the day when we go for a drink, you will see. I'm really not a bad oak. It's just Tiffany knows which buttons to push. If Tiffany wants me to lose my shit, then she cuts me off from the kids. She knows how to play my, my stuff. She knows what strings to pull. Because I know, I know um, in the comment section of one of the videos, or maybe more than that, there are some people that have called Tiffany out for playing victim. And I think that's something that has been recognized by, you know, several viewers over the years anyway. So I think her playing victim is something that isn't, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not something that's going to be a surprise, you know what I mean? But I think when you're on a show now and you are being portrayed, you know, in a certain way, what happens is that for some viewers who have been through... Um, a relationship of some sort of domestic violence or something like that per se, you know, a lot of us will just uh, focus on the, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? We'll focus on the things that look similar, you know, the, 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 the things that are triggers or whatever. So I think, you know, we, with that being said, I think that's why there were some people who are like, hold on a minute, Tiffany likes to play victim and she probably does certain things that's going to portray yourself in a certain way. And then also on top of that, TLC are also going to do some sort of, you know, um, editing that may also make you look like that as well. Which is why, obviously, for me, you know, I always, I always, I always ask the question. I don't understand why anyone would put themselves on a show that would then put them in a light that for others who don't see Tiffany has the one that could potentially be the one who is the problem and only going to focus on you being the problem. It's like, you know, why put yourself in that position, do you know what I mean, to always be put on a show that's going to portray you in that light, you know what I mean? Because obviously the worst thing you want as a person, and I think obviously as a man, to be fair, is to be put on a TV show and then you're portrayed as someone that could be abusive when you may know for yourself that you're not, do you know what I mean? And I think the question is, you know... Yes, and you won't believe me, like, what we film and what you see on TV you won't believe the difference. It's as if they would take one scene, but they would take three incidents and put it into one. Mm -hmm. So they, they will let us form by this one place and talk about three topics. 
then film by another place and talk about the same three topics. But the editing is so good. Like, how can I say this? It's even though you try so hard to not look like that when you are filming, the way they edit it, it falls into a puzzle in a way that you won't believe. Mm -hmm. And I saw that actually the day when I was watching how they edited the cameraman scene. You know, uh, when I flipped out about the cameraman. Yeah. They don't, they don't show the whole story of what happened how did it come that I triggered? How did it come that I lose my shit on that day? And Tiffany also won't even make it known to the public of, yeah, you know what? The day when I arrived, Tiffany won't say that. The day that I arrived, like I was all flirty and happy, chappy with the cameraman the whole time. Um, and Ronald asked me, like, do you know the cameraman? And I said, no, he's just a very nice guy. And... Ronald then just said, hmm, okay. And the day of the cameraman scene, just before we filmed, Ronald pulled me one side, asked me to stop being so flirtatious with the cameraman. And I agreed to, I will not do it anymore. Only to, while we were filming, leave my handbag in the car, take the bottle of brandy and say, I'm going to stay by the hotel where the cameraman is living sleeping over also, she's going to stay there. So obviously, what will I think now? Tiffany won't say that. You know, all those things I mentioned now. Tiffany won't say those things or make it known because that puts her in a bad light. Mm -hmm. you with me. Yeah. I mean, for, for any normal human being, it would look like, okay, there is something going on between them because why the hell does she want to stay here? After I asked her numerous times, I didn't just ask her once, I just, I didn't just tell her once to get in the car. I asked her numerous times, that was obviously edited out, to please stop the drama, get in the car, let's go. Because I saw the shit coming. I saw it. Because I lost my temper when she told me outside that you will see your kids when they are 18. Then I said, okay, now with that, camera's off. Listen, filming is over. Tiffany, let's go. Let's go, please. Climb in the car, let's go. And I got in the car and I said, Tiffany, please, let's go. And then she was like, no, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to make it known. And what the, And that's when I lost myself. And that's when she took the bottle of Bacardi and walked into the hotel. And when I walked in, them two were all laughing and joking and stuff. In a serious matter like this, I mean, you prefer to go sit inside and joke with the cameraman while your husband's waiting outside for you in the car. Wow. Things I mean, like that she doesn't say. So, I mean, I mean, I think moving forward, just, just away from just the show, in January, whatever, because obviously, as you've obviously admitted that, um, you know, you can have a temper if, if, if it's triggered. Is Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Are, are, no, you, for sure. are you looking into how to maybe stop like or no 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 stop sorry are you looking into how you can kind of manage it so because obviously here's the thing at the end of the day in life you know there's always going to be new people that's going to come into your life whether it's tiffany or again or someone else whatever who's going to do things to trigger you are you looking into finding ways to manage that because obviously you know with a temper if you don't find a way to so, manage it it can definitely get you into a lot of trouble if you know what i mean so oh no i agree with you yeah but can i just mention one thing mm -hmm. I already started looking into it actually like two years ago. Okay. To see where, where is my, where is this anger of mine coming from? Because it's been a while, right? And I found out, I went to a, a what was it, a professor. He's a therapist, but he's a professor, you know, and he dug, he dug deep into my past, you know, and only to realize that, listen, all this anger was, from my childhood, mm -hmm. when my dad was hitting my mother, you know, um, when I was experiencing um, re rejection, even when I was in my mother's womb, because she wanted a daughter and my dad wanted a, a son, you know, so I was experiencing rejection from the mother, from my mother's side already. 
My legs was closed the whole pregnancy, so they couldn't see my gender until I was born. Okay. You see, so strange enough, it makes sense that it will affect me, the rejection part and so forth, and obviously me not um, clearing things up with my dad, you know, um, not having a father figure when I grew up, up until my stepdad came into my life, um, but then I was already like rebellious, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I was already in my teenage years. Then it was already like almost lost. So that's where all my anger and stuff, and also because I don't talk about my emotions. I don't talk about what I feel. I don't cry. I believe strictly like men don't cry. Uh, Even uh, though now today, now today I know that, okay, it's okay to cry. Um, yeah. Sorry, but just give me one second. Okay. Where's the Stallman? Yes, I have been looking into it, but I just want to say with that. And you can you can go behind me, you can ask anyone. You can ask my mother, you can ask my boss, you can ask my brother, anyone. But since me and Tiffany separated now and the previous time, right, when I was with Lauren, I didn't have one of these outbursts. Okay. Not one. Yeah. I'm not blaming Tiffany, but I do, I am saying that Tiffany knows which buttons to push yeah. to bring out that because I know how I can get and I control myself. Sorry, let me just hear what this guy says. Hi there. So, yeah, you know, I've not been having these outbursts at all. Yeah. Because I can control my anger. But when it becomes too much, it becomes uncontrollable. But if there's one thing I can tell you, and that's a promise I made myself since I was, since when I could ever remember, I would never lift my hands for a woman. Never. Yeah. That's Due that's to my that's dad that's lifting his hands to my mom, and me and my brother was each hanging on each of his arms. One on the left, one on the right, trying to hold him back. But obviously my dad was very strong. I mean, imagine a three-year-old hanging on your arms while you are eating a woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't feel it, you know what I'm saying? And my dad was an alkalist. So, um... Wait, so you, you, your dad was an yeah. alkalist, you say? Yes, he was a very good police inspector. Okay. He was a police inspector. He was very good at his job. Anyone you would... Anyone who I would have met in my years growing up, who knew my dad from work, would all of them would only speak good. He was very good at his job, but at home, he was the worst. So I told myself, I, I don't want to be like him. I never want to be like him. You yeah. know, um, eating my wife, not being there for my children. The last phone call I can remember from my dad, he called me out of jail. You know, then they, um, he did something at work and they called him out or something. I oh, know, he was locked up for assault because he would get drunk and then he would just go beat up people he is suspecting of stealing cars, for example. Then he would, because he doesn't have enough evidence, he would just go beat them up. So, yeah, that's my dad. Mm. Madness. But yeah, I mean... If I mean, you don't press my buttons, I won't explode. That's the fact of the matter. Yeah, and no, I completely get that. You know what I mean? Um, and I, that's, I mean, for me personally, you know, I'm, I'm just a big advocate that, you know, if you know that your buttons can be pressed, you know, trying to find a way to um, handle them when they are pressed, you know what I mean? And obviously, I, I, I'm not... How can I put it? Um, I, I don't believe in a void... I'm not saying this, this is you, by the way. This is me just generally speaking. I, I don't... Yeah. I don't believe in avoiding people that trigger you. I believe in finding ways to, um, I believe in finding mechanisms to help you. So when that person's around or people like that person's around, when they do do certain things, you already know how you're not going to, I mean, like for me personally, my, my, my way of handling people who do get in my skin is I would, I just walk away. You know what I mean? I just, I know it's not always easy as one, two, three, but I've always said to myself that 
I have just got to find a way to walk away, either physically or mentally. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I don't want to put myself in a position where someone gets to me that much. It's going to get me to a point where I'm going to lash out because that's not who I am. And me saying that's not who I am, but then it happens. I then feel like I've contradicted myself. You know what I mean? And I think for me, I worry more about me contradicting myself to myself more than I do to anyone else because life is a walking contradiction. Do you know what I mean? But all I know is that I don't want to disappoint me. You know what I mean? I don't want to contradict myself. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to feel bad when I look at myself. So all I would say is that obviously I know you said you've, you've been looking for that help for the last two years, which, which is fantastic, but hopefully you can find something that, because obviously you and Tiffany are going to be connected anyway forever because you, you, you've got, you've got, you've got a child, you know what I mean? And I think it's a matter yeah. of finding a way to make sure that no matter how many times she may try to trigger you with those buttons, you find a way to be like, you know what? I'm not even going to scoop to that level because at the end of the day, you know, you've got, you got, that you got to do what's best for yourself. At, at, you know, I'm going to say with that, that as we speak, me and Tiffany are getting along in a, in a friendship way. Mm-hmm. Like, she can see now that even though she used to be able to press my buttons by not, not letting me speak to the kids, um, whether it's on purpose or not answering the phone, in the past, I would like start freaking out if she's not answering the phone, especially mm-hmm. if it's a day, two days, three days, you know? Yeah. Um, how can you not check your phone? I mean, I'm not stupid. Now, if it happens now, I don't give her a reaction anymore. Yeah. Stephanie feeds from emotion. Mm-hmm. You know, she, 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 it's, it's her entertainment um, to get a reaction out of me. So now I learned not to give a reaction anymore. Yeah. You know, just, just take a breath, take a step back. It will be okay. That's one thing I learned. And let me tell you, you will be able to quote um, with me on this, is that the gym, I started gymming, right? And the gym helps so much for men- mentality, um, emotions, and so forth. 100%. You know, to get, get those frustrations out also. And, you know, because when I'm in the gym, it's just me and the gym. That's it. That's it. And That's it, man. That helps so much. That helps That's so it, much. Man. Um, you know, the, 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 the gym is underrated for mental health. That's all I can say. I mean, I think a lot of people think the gym is for exercise and exercise, which, which it is, but for a lot of people, um, I mean, listen, I can walk into a gym right now and I could, I could identify why each and every single person is in the gym right now. So I've been coming for that long and I understand it so much, you know, and I do know that, um, for men, at least actually even for men and women, to be fair, the gym is a very good yeah. place for your mental health because it's, it's, it's a place okay. where it's, it's not even, I mean, for some people, it's an outlet. For me personally, it's a place of discipline. It's a place where I challenge myself. And then I say to myself, if I can do these things that I've set myself today, then that means the rest of the day, I'm going to be able to conquer anything. Do you know what I mean? And, yes. and so on. And you focus only on yourself for that hour, hour and a half that you're in there. Absolutely. And that's you, you time. And it helps so much with battles that you are fighting. You know, nobody really knows the demons I fight in inside my four walls at home. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. Nobody knows the pain I go through when I don't speak to speak to the kids. Nobody knows how it felt when I walked into my house and everything. Stuff was given away. My Xbox, my air fryer, the toaster, stuff like that was given away. Tiffany threw away her wedding ring. She told me she threw it away when she climbed in the Uber to the airport. Um, But only to hear that she actually gave it away. Wow. To someone that I know. And you know what I told them? They asked me, do you want your stuff back? I said, no. You know what? Keep it. Because now it has no more meaning or no more nothing. So things like that, that's just, it's, it's quite sad, but it's the reality. I'm, I'm, I feel relief that it happened. I feel that I gave it a shot, right? I put, even though I chose Lauren in February above Tiffany, right? I put that relationship one side and gave the marriage one more try, you know, to see if we can work things out. And that obviously blew up. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. I'm glad it happened. Tiffany, on the other hand, with Dan um, being a man, 
you know what? I support that relationship 100%. I want her to be happy. And I told her that. I have the WhatsApp message. I told her, Tiffany, I want to see you happy. I want to see you um, smiling. You know, I want to see you get all those emotions out or receive all the love and stuff that I didn't give to you. I want to see you receive it from someone else. All I ask you is, if you go out there, hello, just don't. Oh, wait. So you're the illusion. Yeah, I, I lost it for a second there. You, you said if you go out there, and then what happened after that? Sorry. Um, I told her that if you go out and seek a relationship or go out on dates or whatever. Please, just don't do it in front of the kids because you have to set an example for Daniel. I don't want him to see you are dating so many men or bringing so many men home or getting bed with them. And Carly as well. Please, if you introduce someone to them, make sure about it. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't want know. Carly to see the wrong stuff, if you that know, makes sense what I'm trying to say. No, it makes sense because I know there was a scene um, where Daniel is talking to Tiffany. And this is this is mm. when Tiffany first tells tells him about uh, going out on a date for the first time or something like that. And uh, I remember Daniel's reaction to Tiffany making that choice. And honestly, his his reaction was so mature. It was it was it was uh, it was refreshing, but also at the same time, it was a, a bad reflection on Tiffany because on the way P Tiffany's character has been portrayed, you know, throughout the the night days anyway. Uh, especially in the most recent season, you know, it's definitely been, been been betrayed, at least in my eyes, that she hasn't necessarily concerns simply. Oh, okay, he disappeared. <laughs> Let's see if you can get him back. And again. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. I fine. Know, That's fine. No, yes, yeah. You were talking about the scene yeah, where yeah, Daniel is talking. Yeah, where Daniel's talking. Yeah, and I was just saying in that scene, stuff in particular, you know, Daniel. Obviously, I, I can't remember obviously what he said word for word, but I know obviously he brought up his concerns about um, Tiffany going out there, and he also made it clear that he doesn't want to meet any guy anytime soon unless you know unless Tiffany n knows that um, that man is going to be actually be there because he didn't want to go through the same experiences that he went through um, with yourself. You know what I mean? So watching that scene itself in particular, you know, was was it, it was very refreshing from himself, but also quite disappointing in Tiffany because moving on now, obviously for the rest of the season, it. it it just came across as if, you know, she basically ignored what he had said, you know, because, um, you know, she obviously starts, she went on a date with that guy, but then all of a sudden she then leaves, goes to South Africa to pursue a relationship with you. I mean, in the show, she denies it, but it's clear that that's, that was the intentions. Obviously she does that. Then of course on the tell all now, um, you come out, she has her say, and then all of a sudden, once you've been taken off the show and you've had your, your, your segment gone on the tell all, all of a sudden, this guy's just reappeared again. And that, yes, it, that's it, the other thing. Like, they were planning to screw me there also because I was not aware he's going to be on the show. I, 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 I was I mean, told he's not going to make an appearance. Yeah, I know. I mean, so when, when, when he appeared now, I was very, very confused, especially when they then announced the fact that Tiffany had gone away for four months. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute. So this guy's been waiting for four months. And I think it, just him coming back alone was also an indication for me, for indication to say that she also ignored, ignored Diane's wishes because if she wanted that guy originally, then she would have never wanted to pursue her relationship with yourself. And she would never w would have gone back to South Africa. And even if she did, she wouldn't have stayed for as long as she had, especially finding out that you were still with Lauren anyway. That would have obviously prompted her to be like, you know what, I need to get up and leave and just go back and see if I can make things work with that guy. But obviously that wasn't the case. You know yeah, no, I mean? she was. She was keeping him on the sideline the whole time when he was in South Africa. No, this is, this is, this is what I'm saying. And, and that's exactly how it's all been portrayed, right? And obviously that's how it pretty much ends off. And it's, it's it's something that is definitely disturbing. Because for me personally, I'm one of these people when children are involved, you know, that's when I get really um, 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 even more serious about it, even more personal about it. Because at the end of the day, your son blatantly told you, do not bring, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, 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 obviously, I don't know if she's introduced that guy to her son yet, obviously, I, I don't know that, because obviously that hasn't been shown, of course, but what I'm saying is that she has gone for a guy that clearly isn't for her, because if he was for her, then that choice would be made prior to going to SA, do you see what I'm saying? And therefore, it's... Yeah, you can have the second option. Yeah, so, so therefore, it's going against Daniel's wishes, because Daniel said that I want you to introduce me to a guy that you know is the guy, but he can't be the guy if he was on the sideline, for four, four, exactly. four plus months.
And, you know, it's not a good example you're sending for the kids, you know. You don't want to let the kids say it's okay to jump from one relationship to another relationship, you know. No, that's, that's the thing. It's not at all. It's not at all, you know. Um, but <laughs> it, it is. Well, we're going to see how this plays out, you know. I mean, I really hope for the best for her. I really hope she finds happiness and stuff. Dan looks like a decent guy, but, you know, um, the devil always Prada. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, all, all I know is from my own acknowledgement, anyone that waits around for four months plus for someone that basically left them, left them, and then they come back for you. All I know is that someone who does that isn't someone that I believe is trustworthy, but the future can only tell that one anyway. But that's just me projecting from just experiences. At the end of the day, if I was that guy, I wouldn't feel comfortable being second fiddle. But if he's feeling comfortable to be second choice, then clearly there's something not right about that guy potentially. But that's just me speaking freely because uh, I'm... Yeah, I mean, if that guy only knew that like literally a day or two before the tell Tiffany was still sexually interacting with me over the phone, you know, getting undressed and those type of things. Yeah, no, I, I know. I, I'm, I wonder I'm, what I'm he would, it, I made it a point. I know what he would say then. No, I, I, listen, I know, because I'm, I, I, I remember doing the reaction. I remember I made it abundantly clear about the fact that he's taken her back. And I'm thinking, like, so this whole time, you know, she went back and you're... And anyway, that's just, that's a whole other conversation. But uh, I know I've already made my... Yeah, that's why I said there's so many like things, you know, to Absolutely. talk about. I mean, listen, I mean, for me personally, you know, I, I, I obviously, like I said before, obviously, I appreciate you reaching out to obviously want to have your say, you know, and obviously for me, I just want you to obviously just, you know, explain your side of things. But, um, you know, mm. obviously in, in, in the few, in the near future, whenever you're available, we can definitely set up the, um, the, the, the uh, what do you call it? The live streams. And then, um, yeah. And then just yes. to see what ha ha happens from there. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Like one thing I can tell you is that, um, like when the producer found out that I was going to do an interview with Dominic, right? Um, he asked me to not do it and those type of things. But now I'm going to just like go against it. You know what? The only reason why I reached out to you is because I, I had you... Sorry about Jimmy the key. Um, I had you hearing what you said, like that you don't... What is it that you said? Um, you said I didn't want to take a, account for my actions right mm -hmm. or something like that yeah yeah i just wanted to rectify that that i'm not pointing out a finger to someone um what i meant with that text on that reply is that i was going to set things right pretty soon by making things known to the public like tiffany saying that she filed for divorce example that's why i sent those screenshots to the one blogger to post to show the world that, listen, Tiffany has not filed for divorce. I'm the one who filed for divorce. She refused to sign it and asked, obviously, she wants to make her own settlement and she her own divorce lawyer and those type of things. Yeah. Things like that, you know, that I'm starting to put out there slowly but surely. That's what I meant with that text. Okay. That and obviously, when I posted that, the producer called me. He was like, can I take all this info to TLC? we might want to film some things. So I said, yeah, sure. Um, because the producer feels he did me wrong with Tiffany's season. And he wants to like give me the opportunity to rectify things on what is the hold up, what happened, where am I now, what am I doing, those type of things. Mm -hmm. You see, so, yeah, there's a lot, lot happening and... Um, one thing I can tell you is when it comes to me standing up for what I did wrong, you will always find me standing in front when it comes to taking the blame for something I did. Fair enough. I, w I will never point a finger towards someone else because that's just what my mother told me, taught me in the years that she raised me. Um, I have a beautiful mother. I have an amazing mother. And she hasn't raised a bad, a bad man, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just Tiffany knows which buttons to push to bring that ugly side of me out. That's the thing. Because if you play with my kids or if you play with my family, then we're going to fight. I don't care who you are. You know, I just feel that I was done very wrong. 
with them cutting out those teams where I, where I bluntly spoke about. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. That was loud. Um, where I bluntly spoke about Tiffany stealing the money and those type of things. I feel that was wrong. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's their show. I can't say nothing. You know? Yeah. No, I get it. Completely get it. I mean, but, you go ahead, yeah, go I mean, I can give you a call again when I leave here. Let me just finish here by the site quickly. And we're going to have more chat. But I hope I clarified some of your things. Even though I jumped to 20 stories, I <laughs> hope I was able to clarify myself on certain things. Yeah, no, that's fine. So what I'm going to do anyway, obviously, with, with the chats that we have anyway, I'm just going to put them together, whatnot, and just make a, and just make like a clip. And then just let the, let, let, let the viewers obviously hear your say, because I think it's, it's only fair that people hear your say, because obviously, you know, a lot of our perception on, on our, and our comments are based on what we saw from Tiffany's view in terms of the fact that, as you said already, she was... You go the, with what you see on TV, yeah. Yeah, she, she was... Obviously, obviously, the show was based on her this season. It wasn't based on you. So, obviously, you're just now yes. telling us the rundown of, obviously, what... what, 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 what I was basically you, the puppet on the string. Yeah, we can go with that one, yeah. <laughs> so, you know... Uh, <laughs> Ronald left your leg, then I had to lift my leg. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So, uh, yeah. See, I'm just yeah. gonna... No, but let me tell you, I love the way your channel, the way you speak and the way you give your honest opinion and stuff. I love it. And I even said it to my one friend today. I said, I love this guy's... Um, the... What do you call it? The videos you make? Yeah, yeah. The content. I just love it. The, the way you put it, the content. That's the word. Thank you. Um, obviously, I'm speaking Afrikaans. That's why I'm struggling to get the English word. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I really appreciate. It. I mean, listen, I I just do what I can. But at the end of the day, for me, you know, I just want to um, just just share my views, my opinions. You know what I mean? I'm I'm definitely aware, obviously, that sometimes, of course, my views and opinions may be a little bit off. But I always make it abundantly clear to people that hey, man, like my reaction is based on what I. You see. put it in two ways. That's what I like. Yeah. You you give two points of views. 100%. There's no point of getting one. That's just, that's just boring. Yes, yes. No, I appreciate that. But the other reason why I'm willing to go live with you is because, I don't know if you know John Yates. I've, I've, heard, I've, I've heard of him. I think it's, the thing is for me is that I actually don't know. I mean, I, I've heard of other creators, but I don't actually know any of them because my, my, my thing is that I actually don't watch any other creator because I have this belief that if I watch another career, it's going to cloud my own viewship of how I'm going to view someone. That makes sense. So for me, I actually don't watch no one else to be fair. Just so I know that when I deliver a video, it's authentic. What I'm saying is 100% authentic in terms of what I believe. It's not influenced by what I've heard from another source, if that makes sense. But yeah, I've heard of John. Yeah, no. yeah so he is quite a stirrer, but I mean, I will set the record straight via your channel and i think we can pull a lot of traffic also to your channel you know um because he someone said the other day that me and lauren was scamming tiffany and things like that you know so i want to set the record straight with those type of things okay especially on the live no yeah absolutely i'm, I'm down for that now nah, cool but let me give you a call then when i'm done yeah i'll just send you a message and then we can continue the chat. Okay, man. Thank you. Thanks bro. for the talk and thanks for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cool, man. Speak to you soon. All right. Bye. Cheers. Bye.